Hi everyone, I'm Hope Mers, nurse practitioner and doctor of nursing practice here at Advanced Cosmetic Surgery and Laser Center. Today we're showing you a little bit of behind the scenes action from our segment with Channel 12 today regarding facial volume loss as we age and as we quickly lose weight. So we're replacing that volume with fillers for a nice contoured youthful appearance. So I'm going to go ahead and cleanse everywhere, Colleen. Do you um, perfect at all, or just typically for, for these it? areas we don't. Yeah, um, the, the skin doesn't absorb that topical numbing too too well. It really, by the time we're finished, it's it's not it's not very uncomfortable at all. The lips, the mucous membranes of the lips absorb that numbing a little bit better, and so we do utilize it there in a more sensitive region. But the cheekbones and jawline and down here in the folds really aren't. <laughs> There's also lidocaine within the fillers that we use, so as we get started here, that lidocaine will start to work and numb even further, so yeah. that helps. Okay, so I'm going to just mark you while you're sitting up if you don't mind, because things change when we lay back, so. And turn towards me. So I'm going to actually start on your left side here. <clears throat> so Colleen's cheekbone here, I actually need to come up into the tear trough a little bit and support that under eye circle. That really gives a brighter appearance to the under eyes as well and that'll, she'll like that. So we'll be back here on the jaw. Okay. So this portion doesn't hurt, it feels kind of a little bit wiggly maybe underneath the tissue. but. I'm using a blunt tipped needle called a cannula. So it actually makes for a very safe and easy transition from the tear trough to the cheek. So I can thread a little filler all through the front of the cheek there, help with what we refer to as the malar crease. As we lose volume, just skin age related along with weight loss, um, that can show up in the front of the face pretty significantly in that malar crease. Already you can start to see a little bit of a difference under her tear trough if you compare sides. Good job, Colleen. How are you doing? I'm okay. What do you think? How does it feel? It feels, it, it feels different, but doesn't hurt. Yeah, good. It's like a facial. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't get it. <laughs> introduce her again. She's a 27, 25. The, blue, the little blue one, yeah. So this is a sharp needle. This pokes a little channel for my cannula to go in. It's amazing how quickly the skin starts to heal. It doesn't last too long, that channel. Sometimes you have to reintroduce it there. Okay, so that should be good for the front part of her left cheek. So what, okay. I, was, what I was saying with the buckle fat mm -hmm. is even if we're doing buckle fat, the way the way we're working on the upper portion of the face, right, to help shape it, which is ultimately what some of the goals are with when patients come in for buckle fat, they want their facial shape to be enhanced. Okay, one, two, three. Now I'm gonna start moving laterally on her cheekbone. So what this is gonna do is help more with lift on the inferior portion of the left side of her face here. So you'll notice as I put a volume back laterally, and we can kind of mold the filler to how we want it here. It's gonna start lifting at the jawline back up because now she has that contour to the cheekbone. Okay, good job, Colleen. Mm -hmm. All right, let me see you sit up real quick. I just wanna see how we have it so far. Let me see. Can you point out some things? I get a wet gauze. I can see an improvement, but can you show me the improvement? Oh, sorry, yeah. I was just going to clean this up a little. Okay. We don't have blood on you anymore. <laughs> okay, so, so far we've just done a little bit of mid-face cheekbone contouring on Colleen here. You can tell in comparison to her right side, if you look at the tear trough going into the malar crease, this lends to creating a fold in the 
nasolabial area here is what we call that. So when I replace a little volume under the tear trough and into the malar crease, the front of the cheek, and laterally on what we call the zygoma, the cheekbone, that pulled back from her nasolabial fold and actually already lifted her jawline a little bit. I'm still gonna come down posteriorly here and that will pull back even more. And then after we lift the nasolabial area, then I'm gonna come down and just kind of fine tune that little bit of a shadow there. turn you to your right just a little. All right, so quick little poke back here. One, two, three. So right now I'm back at the angle of Colleen's jaw. Just replacing a little bit of volume here is not going to give her a masculine look to the jawline, nothing like that. We lose volume back here as well as everywhere else, just with age-related changes, um, weight loss, our masseter muscle starts to thin and that can help replace that volume. So I'm only enhancing her natural structures. We're not really augmenting anything. I feel good. You feel good. It doesn't doesn't hurt. She looks great. Come on over you. Sure. Okay, so I'm just gonna poke you here on the jawline. You're gonna feel a little ouch there. This is that cannula I was talking about. So what I'm gonna do is go in that little hole I just made and run it. This might be a little uncomfortable as I go through the tissue there, good job. So you can see my cannula kind of right along the jawline here. And that's where I'm getting, it's this little sulcus in the, in the jawline. That's really gonna help pull back. So I'm injecting as, as I pull this out. You can see that jawline starting to really be enhanced. Okay, and then I can mold it so I can kind of push, get it into right where I want it. Thank you. And then you can tell that angle. Yeah, I see That's that. pretty, right? So, might be a little bit swollen where I go in with that cannula, but honestly you can't see that anything was done. She can go to dinner tonight with her friends, whatever she wants to do. Okay, so now I'm gonna come in here and just reduce that shadow a little bit with her nasolabial fold. So I'll do cannula with that one too, the Jupiter Mulch Plus. Cannula's on. Yeah, I just need the introducer, the blue. Yeah. Thank you. Pretty at all of them. Well, obviously. Okay, so you're gonna feel me just. One, two, three. Good job. Thank you. Okay, one, two, three. This can feel kind of wiggly and weird. So a lot of the times, like Dr. Mendelson mentioned with the lidocaine and the filler, I'll inject a little bit right here so it starts to numb that area. Just give it a couple seconds so it's as comfortable as can be here. Around the mouth can be a little bit more sensitive than out on the jawline and the cheekbone. This might feel like I'm kind of under your nose. Good job. <laughs> so right now my cannula is actually up here by her nasal aloe there. All right, and we're injecting. Okay, I'm going to come up again. I think might be a little weird. Good job. <laughs> Pretty. All right, pretty earth. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, 
you're gonna feel me come back in there. I'm gonna do one more little bit by your nose. Okay, perfect. All right, maybe go ahead and sit up again for me here. So this is already starting to lift her mouth area. You can tell her lip on her left side is even more lifted than the right, and that kind of just starts making its way down to lift everything towards the jawline. But I'm also gonna come a little lower. So let's do that lower marionette. And I'll go ahead and hit it. 21 yet? <laughs> 24. 24. Okay, I'll take it. Maybe a little hook here. One, two, three. What are you using? Uh, I'll, the ultra plus again. Thank you. Okay. Really weird feeling again. I'm going to come up towards the base of that little smile line. Good job. Okay, I'm going to come towards your marionette area here. There's a fat pad at the lateral side of the chin here that as we age and with just um, weight loss, this can actually make a much more youthful appearance when you fill. And with a cannula, I can thread just very naturally and the entirety of that area. So, if I was doing a little more, I'd probably just do a little bit more cheekbone contour, maybe a touch more jawline. I think nasal labial looks pretty good. Now, this is going to fill out a touch more too. So, Can you see some of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah and Colleen looks three to me like you did before. That's what I. That's what I had prior. I want to okay. see what I can see when I get back. Hope, point out, just go, go through the areas that you just treated and, mm -hmm. and perhaps what product you used. Sure. So today we used all hyaluronic acid gel products on Colleen. Um, up here under the tear trap, I did Juvederm Voluma. So Juluma, Juluma. <laughs> Voluma is a thicker product. It's really good with contouring. So when we do it in a, a little bit under the base of the tear trap, you can just tell the brightness under her left eye as opposed to a little bit of a shadow there on her right that might make someone look kind of tired, even if you get your eight hours of sleep. There's not much you can do about that tear trough deficit except for filling it a touch with filler. Um, we also went out to the lateral portion of the cheek, so the zygoma. This really helps just lift and contour the mid face along with pulling up at the jawline. It pulls back at the nasolabial fold, pulls back at the marionette. We also, that was Voluma as well, we also did some of that Juvederm Velux on her jawline. So that's got the kind of thickest contour um, aspect to that filler and it really does well with the jawline. So you can see how that pulled back at her jowl area. This is also a little bit swollen right here because that's where I went in with my cannula that you saw. So once that swelling goes down, this filler back here is gonna actually fill out a little bit more because these filler products are hydrophilic. So they draw water to them. So as this fills out, this swelling goes down, she should have even better contour to her jawline in about a week or two. So you, you don't see the full um, result of this, pro this product, all of these, the results until about maybe one to two weeks. Yeah. That work. Yeah. I'm good, uh, other than, you know, the Just, Now, will she have to keep up with this? Yes, so um, these products are all FDA approved for a certain length of time, typically okay. due to their thickness, their viscosity. So uh, this one, the Voluma, is up to two years. Mm -hmm. Now we don't want to let that all fade off. So typically we'll retouch it maybe once a year. After we do your contouring, you don't typically need that initial amount of syringes. You can see I'm doing about maybe four on Colleen today. That would average maybe four to six syringes when you start, and then maybe one to two a year to keep it up in the cheekbone here. So 
your initial investment will be a little bit more, but then the maintenance is easier. Yep. Okay. And what, what are we talking about ballpark for an initial cost? Price wise, it ranges um, from 700 ish to a couple thousand, depending on how much product we're using. Okay. Yeah. We also have in house rewards programs that help with that, give percents off, you get points back. Um, it really helps with the maintenance portion of it as well. So, is that kind of what you'd say price wise? Yeah. Or syringe, right? I mean, if I'm using a few syringes, it'd be a couple thousand, you know, yeah, yeah for time. Um, the okay, FDA, I'm gonna finish even though it's FDA approved, so this is what happens is that the, so it's whether or not they're competitors, so they're different manufacturers. So the Juvederm is the Allergan line, right? You've got Restylane, Medicis is, is, is Restylane in, the, in those products. So somebody has three months, right? FDA approved, then someone has six months, someone has nine months, someone has 18, two years. I've seen patients back eight years later who've had filler and it needs to be reversed. They didn't, they didn't like it and they thought it would go away at two years or 18 months. But needless to say, they still have the product in there. I know, so I get around saying is, So even though that, that's the FDA, right, that, we, that, we just, that she just mentioned, it really, um, most of these products last longer. And, but what happens is, so she's got a wedding, an anniversary, a trip, there's some event, she kind of remembers. So that's often when people come in, do you, do you think I need a little more? It's been about two years, but do you think I need a little more? And we're kind of touching it up and enhancing it a little bit. So, yeah, this is one area where actually the duration that's quoted is less than what you really get. But, you know, so I mean, you're watching this, right? In 20 minutes, or I mean, she's doing half her face, but needless to say, right? It's, it's non surgical. She's, she's a good candidate yeah. for I'm it. I'm going to get photos you know, of that side. In. She's in, she's out. Let's get some know. photos real quick, don't you think? And then I'll, I'll do your right side, just so we can maybe get a cool half face. So stay tuned and watch our segment on Channel 12. There's a new cosmetic procedure that alters a person's cheekbones. As medical reporter Liz Bonus explains, it isn't without risk. Hey there, everybody. It is a newer trend in cosmetic procedures, but before you decide to have what's called buccal fat removal, facial plastic surgeons have a word of caution. Buccal fat is a fat compartment in our lower cheek that we all have. Facial surgeon John Mendelson says to remove buccal fat, incisions are made inside your mouth on both sides of your face to remove the fat. It gives you kind of a kissy face look. And if I kind of pull my cheeks in a little bit, you'll see a depression in that area. The procedure is not without risks. There is one of the branches of our facial nerve, and that's a nerve that controls our facial expression that could be injured during that uh, removal. So Mendelssohn's team says they try and enhance or boost the area around the buccal fat to give an improved look instead, most commonly with facial fillers. For Colleen, the goal was to improve and the jowls. Um, these lines are a little bit deeper. Nurse practitioner Hope Mers says since most of us lose face fat with weight loss or normal aging. And so what we typically do is put a little bit of filler above that area to help recontour the cheek and lift away from that shadow and fold that we can notice that bothers most patients. Here's Colleen's before and afters so you can see that gradual lift. Now those fillers range in cost from a few hundred to a few thousand dollars. That buccal fat removal can fall in the same numbers. I'm medical reporter Liz Bonus. Now back to you.